Hello and welcome to SciJoy. We're going to learn how to wire and program our first digital circuit using a pendulum activity from our time series. We want to keep track of the motion of the pendulum. To do this, we need to know its position and the time between swings. This is also known as its period. If we place a magnet at the bottom of the pendulum, we can use a Hall effect sensor to track the magnetic field. We can use the quartz oscillator on the Arduino to keep track of time. We need to hook up the Hall effect sensor and we can use information from the data sheet, which is linked below. It tells us that the Hall effect sensor we're using is a latch type. It's like a button. When you push down on a button, you close the circuit and it rides high until you push the button the second time. And this is going to open the circuit and drive the output to a low. On page four of the data sheet, it shows us that the north pole of the magnet closes the circuit and causes a high reading, and the south pole of the magnet opens the circuit and causes it to go low. And page three shows us the pin layout. And keep in mind whether you're looking at the flat face or the bumped out side. Pin one is for our power, pin two is for the ground, and pin three is for our signal. And if we scroll down to the top of page four, we're gonna see that its operating voltage ranges from 3.5 to 24 volts. This means we can use our five volt power supply from the Arduino. We know from a previous episode that we should either use a pull up or a pull down resistor. And this fritzing wiring diagram is also linked down below for you to use. Now our system consists of the pendulum, a Hall effect sensor, an Arduino, and the computer. The Arduino reads the different voltages coming from the signal pin. And it also takes the time from the oscillator and sends this information over the serial port to the computer for you to read. When we created the LEGO robot programs, we had to tell the robot which ports we were using. It knew ports 1 to 4 were for sensors, and then the block we chose told it what kind of sensor we were using. The Arduino has so many more possibilities, so it needs a little bit more help. You need to specify whether it's an analog or digital pin, if you're reading or writing to the pin, and what pin number you're looking at. If you are sending information to the serial monitor, you have to tell the Arduino to open the serial communication to the computer. Then you have to tell it what you're printing to the serial monitor. So let's start writing our code. And the top is meant for things that are only going to be done once. First, we define whether the pin is an input or an output, and which pin we're looking at. We use the pin mode, and inside of the parentheses, we put the pin number and that it's an input. Then we add a semicolon to the end. You do this to the end of every line in your code. We want to open the communication between the Arduino and the computer. To do this, we use serial.begin, and the number inside the parentheses is called the baud rate, which is how fast your data is being transferred in bits per second. Typically, this is set to 9,600. The void loop section will run over and over again. In here, we can look at values read by the Hall effect sensor using the digital read function. Again, we have to tell it what pin to look at. We assign this to a variable in order to print it out to the computer. We can go back to the top and define a variable named state. We need to tell the computer what type of variable to use. Since the digital output only gives a 0 or a 1, we can define it as an integer. You have to initialize the variable, and we're going to set it to 0. We will also need a variable for time. This is a much longer number because the Arduino keeps track of time in milliseconds. Therefore, this variable is going to be assigned a long number. Going back to the void loop section, we set the time variable equal to the number of milliseconds elapsed since the program has started. Serial print sends values to the computer. To make it look nice, we can print out time and add a space and a comma, and then print out the state. The serial print line creates a hard return for us. We also want to add a delay, or else the Arduino will look at the state every millisecond, which will give us a lot of data. You should adjust the delay and the length of your rope on the pendulum to give you reasonable readings. So let's run the program and see what output looks like. If you open up the serial monitor as the pendulum swings, we can see the numbers and the states change. You can copy and paste these numbers into a Google Sheet or Excel. What ways do you think we could have made this program better? Instead of just constantly sending out the information that was pulled from the Hall effect sensor, do you think we could have written something that would have only told us if it changed from a high to a low or a low to a high? Thanks for watching this episode. On the next one, we're going to teach you how to program an analog circuit. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. You can follow us on any of these social media platforms, and you can support us at patreon.com slash sidejoy. And remember, keep exploring.